Welcome back to another episode of Backyard Builds. This week on Backyard Builds, we're going to take this table of stuff, put it in the wagon. So just before we start this episode, I'd like to say that this episode is supported and everything supplied here was by Engine Masters Australia. If you're ever in need of anything for your car or your project, hit up Engine Masters Australia and they will help you out. We have aero flow fittings. We have dash eight, we have dash 10. I've got dash 10 hard line. We're also gonna do our brake lines today. Holly reg, magna fuel fuel pump. And we're also gonna go into the tools required. So, tank's already back in the car. Go out, start by mounting the pump up and then work forward from there. Come along for this one. So there he is, modified tank, all in. Thanks for your comments on that, tips and suggestions. I'll know for next time, the guy that was worried about it holding pressure, it has held 20 pressure, 20 PSI all night. So it is no problem. So first of all, we're going to need to mount the pump because we need to know where the pump's going to go. So I've already got two nuts hurts up in there from the previous pump. So instead of drilling a heap more holes, we're going to use one of them. Only problem is, is it hits on our hanger. So we're going to have to put a little bit of a relief in there and then put three more nuts hurts in and we should be good. We've still got plenty of good clearance around everywhere else. So I want to fire that up now and get that done. It's always good to test fit all this stuff before you send it away to be coated. So this bracket will go to powder, this tank, um, all these hangers up here will all go to powder coat along with the diff. And then we'll be able to put all this back together and get it back on the ground, hopefully for the last time. So modify this, we'll get a pump in. Pump's mounted, tank's mounted, got some fittings on. Here we go. So we've got a 90 out of the tank. Got that pump mounted up. Three bolts, a little notch out. So just use the drill bit to make the radius right in the end. Why that's important is there's no sharp edges in there. If we were to cut that square, it creates a stress riser off each point, which can cause cracking, and it's not what we're after particularly. So, dash 10 in the pump have dash eight out into flexi line. Probably run flexi line up under the rail, up into a bulkhead fitting and bracket up in here that we're about to make as well. Probably have to put the diff back in to work out that location, but what we're gonna do is grab our hose and we're gonna measure how much we need from there to there. And then we're gonna put that together first. So, working in stages. So this is our start point, and then our end point's gonna be all the way up the front. So I'll cut this up, we'll go through how to cut it, see if I find my parrot cutters, and put some fittings on. <clears throat> I'd be buggered if I can find those parrot nose cutters. I have a feeling they're on a shelf somewhere. But anyway, we can do it another way, we can do it with a grinder, so. What I've done is I've marked where we need to cut. So I'll give her the old slice and dice with a one mil, and then we will go through how to set the fitting. Just before we give the old chop, I'll wrap some masking tape around it so the braid doesn't flare out. Aeroflow actually have a special tape that I found out today that I didn't know about, that I didn't get, which makes apparently this job a whole lot easier. So don't have the tape. Just use masking tape, cut it in the center, go from there. So these are our 200 series fittings. So this is PFP, TFE, so Teflon coated internal. So we have our locking nut, which we need to push over first. Then we have our flare, or our beveled flare. So what we need to do is now split the stainless sheath off the 
internal fitting. So what we can get is just a scribe. And we just need to peel that back a little bit. You're gonna want to be pretty careful because it is stainless and it is sharp. So we just work the weave open a little bit. This is why we put the tape on it. So that doesn't open up automatically. Push it through, it does seat down. Take our fitting, push our fitting in. It's gonna be pretty tight. Take our nut up and over, put a little bit of anti-seize on there, and then we do it up. Also put some anti-seize on the sheath as well, otherwise it will bind up because it's aluminium. So just a smear of anti-seize. Make sure you got a rag. So what I'm using is actually Loctite uh, 8150. You'll need a rag to wipe it off your hands. Wipe the excess of that fitting in a minute. So it just works with the thread. I'm gonna undo it. I'm gonna grab our bottom nut. And then we are going to use some aluminium AN fitting spanners. Wrong one. So what that, what that is going to do is allow us to not mark our AN fittings or the anodizing of the AN fittings. These are a full swivel fitting. So that means that they can swivel once it's tight. So these need to be tight. But they don't need to be hung off. pretty tight we're gonna come around and we're gonna line our flats up just because that's what I want to do so you're not a little bit out of it oh yeah there it goes so that's probably tight enough so I'll do the other end and then this line is made <clears throat> so it's now Sunday and we got a little bit more done yesterday but ran into a couple of little problems I made a mistake. Made two actually. <laughs> One, I didn't buy fasteners. So that meant a trip to Bunnings at like 4.30 yesterday afternoon. And two, I didn't plan it as good as I should have. And I ordered the fittings before I mounted the pump. So that means I have two of the wrong fittings. Which, don't come at me in the comments. I know this is wrong. means that this hose has a kink in it and a kink in it which is definitely not what we're after so i'm going to order a 135 so it should shoot back this way and then maybe a 45 so it shoots back that way and then it'll be more of a straight run between but we've started making the dash 8 side of the pump so we've got our dash 8 fitting in there and then we've started to run our hose up and over and we're actually using these these is this is what i didn't have the fasteners for these are little 3d printed blocks that my cousin mark printed up for me so i drew them up in in solid works made them the rail width which is really nice so general rule of thumb is try not to run anything under the rail or anywhere where it can get crushed so we know that this is our movement in here and it's going to be always clear of that, so that's fine. We're now tucking it between the tank and the rail. By the time we put another clamp in there, it won't be rubbing anywhere. Put a straight fitting on there, and I'll explain that in a minute. But that's where we're up to. So to put that one in, I actually need to turn the car upside down again and go from there. But first some cable ties on these cow tracks because they hurt when they fall off. 
There it is, the start of the fuel system. So I've got the car flipped up the other way. Thanks to Bryant for coming over and giving me a hand with that because she's starting to get a bit heavy and a bit hard to rotate by myself. So, the reason why we had a straight fitting on the end of that piece of flexi is because we went ahead and made a little aluminium bracket. And what the aluminium bracket holds is a bulkhead fitting. So just 3mm alley, bent to 90 degrees, two M6 fastens in there. So just using these for these little hex heads for mock-up because that's what I've got. I will swap them out to little button heads with spring washers underneath of them. So I'll put the bulkhead fitting in. So a bulkhead is generally used for like a pass-through, um, like through floors or things like that. In this case, we're actually using it in two applications. We're using it to convert from flexi to hardline, as well as being a bracket to hold the fuel line off the rail, off the tank on that side. Why are we using a bulkhead fitting here? It's because I want to run hardline from this point all the way to the front of the car. So I just like to look at hardline over flexi, flexi would have been much easier to run, but the hard line will give the effect and the look that I'm after. Um, the reason why it's got flexi from the tank and then from the pump to here is because of the vibration through the pump. The vibration of the pump would, would have probably caused a small fracture inside of the hard line. So by having flexi, we have all that movement for the pump to be rubber isolated, none of that vibration to go into the car and start making shitty noises while we're trying to drive it. All right, I'll start there. I'll do this up, we'll put the fitting on and we'll have a look at uh, running some hardline forward. Now that we've got that uh, bulkhead fitting in with that bracket, it's now time to move on to doing hardline. So we're going to talk about a couple of the tools that you will need to do hardline and brake lines. All this cost me about 70 bucks. So what we have is a 180 degree half inch outside diameter bender. So this is for like copper aluminium line, um, air conditioning. I've got all this stuff at Total Tools. We've also got a bending spring. So the spring goes over, keeps the tension on the tube so it doesn't kink. A deburring tool, same as the one that I use for sheet metal. A set of brake line pliers. So these are really good. Tom had a set of these when we did the HG. I really enjoyed using them. For hard line, we're going to need a flare tool. So 37 degrees, so same as plumbing and gas fitting. This one I picked up at a swap meet or Dad's had it for ages. Aluminium spanners for AN fittings. So this set I bought from EFI Solutions. Um, pretty cheap. I highly recommend getting them. And a tube cutter. So this is 3 to 16 mil. So that's our brake line one. I've got a bigger one there for our aluminium hard line. Another tool that is extremely handy and we're going to use a lot today is our tube straightener. Essentially, we run our tube out of our coil to get it flat and straight and be able to put it in to the car. Sometimes you just have to rearrange everything to the space you've got. So what I did was I went out and I had a look at the car and had a look how much room or how much length we actually needed. So just sort of straightened it out by hand. So now we've put it into the tube straightener. If you are going to do any sort of hard line, brake line, anything, I'd highly recommend these. But all you do is work it back and forward and rotate it around. And as you can see, we're quite straight at that length. Increase the pressure a little bit. And happy days. Try and be as straight as you can. If you pull out one side, or push one side more, it's going to put a small bend in it. So straighten this out, 
well, won't cut it off just yet. But I've got a start point and I've got a finish point on the car, so we'll work that out now. So laid out next to the car, you can see that we've got more than enough than we need. So here is my start point. We're going to come out of here, down on an angle, flatten out, angle again, and then across the bottom of our connector. So do a kick down through here, and then we're going to duck up through where the clutch used to be where the clutch pivot used to be we'll draw that out and i'll put a bulkhead fitting in there then we should be able to come up here across here up here and put our reg in somewhere here but before we put the reg in we'll probably put the motor in and it's going to be flexy from here anyway so that should be more than enough but we're also going to do our brake line at the same time so just our rear same scenario, I know that's my hole I need to hit for the rear, and same sort of geometry trajectory because we're using the same little 3D printed brackets as we did on that hose back there, but we have them made up for fuel and brake line as well. I'm going to start to do this, so first job will be flare that end, put a flare nut on it, and start to use our bender and work our way down. Okay. So whenever we cut the end, again, the bearing tool, just on the inside. So everything's gonna fall down there, which is okay. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna blow all the lines out. So we've got another deburring tool. So this end here is for external. That end there is for internal. It is a brake line tool. So we can use it as well. So just want to knock all the burrs off. There's quite a nice little finish there. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to use a tube nut assembly, which requires a flare. So grab the nut first. So just an AN nut. Slides down over the tube. Then we have an olive that slides under over that. Put that down, make it a bit easier. Then that compresses up, but we need to put a flare on that end as well. So we'll go through that single flare stage now. The tube nuts are quite tight, or the olive is quite tight. So what I do is I grab my other nut, and then we can push it up and down, and we'll be able to bring it back up. So to do a flare, we're going to use our single flare tool which is an old school style flare tool. I think in a half inch, so that just pivots open. Same as our other brake line bender, which we'll discuss again today. Make it flush with the end. Flip it over, tighten her up. This bad boy slips over there like that. Pull center. Do it up until the bottom's out. Undo it. Nelly. <laughs> that comes off. Undo this end. Loosen this end. And now we have a 37 degree flare. And that is why it's pretty important to deburr both sides. So I've got like little grip marks there now. So I'll just go and get a bit of emery. And we'll just run the emery around it and get rid of the grip marks. Slide our nut up, slide our crush tube up, and we'll start to put a bend in here. Again, all this stuff was from Engine Masters in Albury. So by all means, have a chat to Ash, Mark, and the team there. 
and get all your fittings and supplies. So we've just got our first bend in. So now we're going to look at block placement or yeah, mounting bracket placement. So because of the way that I designed them to run the brake line in as well, I know the brake line needs to come up to about here and we've got a proportioning valve as well. So that's probably where the proportioning valve will be mounted because I know that the mufflers hang down about here. There shouldn't be too much heat up there, which will also give me a chance to run small line into a bracket to the flexi to the T. But in New South Wales, for, I don't know if it's applicable for like modified production, but in street rod rules, brake lines must be supported every 300 mil. So we have one here, one here, one down towards here, we should be pretty good. So we'll go and grab a 300 mil ruler and we'll start marking out where we're gonna have to place our lines. So I thought I'd show you how these actually work, these little clips. So they're actually recessed or counterboard on the bottom side. So they are designed to work with a large flange nut cert. So as you can see, that now grips on the nut cert and doesn't move. The hose goes in, or line goes in, sorry. The top goes on, and then we bolt it down. So I've managed to follow the floor pretty well. I did make one little mistake and sometimes it happens when you do tight bends back on each other. So it's a little bit of a mark in there, but it's not gonna affect it. Just a visual thing. It does annoy me a little bit, but it is what it is. So, got our transition under the cross member here. Um, normally I wouldn't like running things under a rail like that but it is protected by the block. And I know that the extractors hang lower than that in that vicinity. So the fuel line probably will not get hit. Transpan will take it before it does. And if the transpan takes it, the sump's gone. So we're in a world of hurt anyway. But I like to leave the coil on for as long as possible in case I need some more. But I know that we're just going to this hole here now. So this amount of line is sufficient. So I'll probably cut it about here take that excess weight off it, mark where this bend's gonna be, shoot it up, and then start to put in that uh, that bulkhead fitting. From there, it'll probably just be flexy up to the, to the reg, but um, we might get adventurous and make it hard line yet, depending how much room we've got with everything in there. So I know that that's a safe spot to go to today without having engine and box in. So I'll cut that off and um, make the bend and fi do final fit off for fuel line. Then we'll start brake line. Car's back to flat again. We just checked a few things, so that's how that brake line, I'm sorry, fuel line ended up. Think about brake lines at the minute. It's a good clearance. Nice little snake up through there. Use that existing hole, which was cool. And as you can see, just the bulkhead fitting there. So that's pretty well as far as I'll go until we get the motor box and everything in. The plan is, is probably just 90 up off there, snake it up to the pressure reg up here. Might hard line it yet, see how I feel about it. And then flexi line from there to the motor. Probably redo the rails. I've got um, some Edelbrock rails that I'm I don't 100% like, but it is what it is. So, oh, sorry. Coming back down to the back of the car, so as you can see, fuel pumps all hanging there really nice. Can't actually see it from the ground. It doesn't hang any lower than the cow truck, the tank. So I think we should be pretty right there. What do you reckon? It's going to be all right. Do you approve? Do you approve? Yeah, so I think we're gonna be pretty good with that. So, moving on to the brake lines now. This will probably be the last job for today. But I went ahead and I brought a proportioning valve. The 
master cylinder that we have for VJ doesn't actually need a proportioning valve if it was VJ VJ. But our rear wheel cylinders are a little bit different in the 9 inch, so I'm going to run a proportioning valve just so we can adjust it up. I did want to mount it down near the tank, but we're running out of real estate down there pretty quick. So my thought was, make a little offset bracket here and mount it down there. So in, in, out, punch a little hole through that sheet metal splash pan, grommet and brake line through there to then meet up with our first block. In that position, still reach under the car and adjust it if required and um, be able to go like that. So go and make a little bracket now. Not certs, not certs. Should be pretty strong. What was I going to say? So we've got this proportioning valve all mounted up in here now. So as you can see, just a little aluminium like a Z bracket that comes off the little kick pan there. So it's pretty strong. So that'll make it easy to run that line there. So I don't actually have to mount the boost rod to run the rear lines today. So, or master cylinder. So it'll come straight out and in. This one will come out, go across, probably punch a hole through here, just put a grommet in there and try and make that in one piece all the way to the rear, just like the fuel line. I just need to work out my drop down bracket to the flexi for the diff and it should be pretty good. Just need to find out the location of that really. So probably up near the shoulder there somewhere and go from there. All right, well, I think that concludes this episode this week. I think this week's code word should be engine masters. So thanks again to engine masters for helping supply all the aeroflow fittings. I forgot a couple and had to use that hydraulic fitting, but it is the same dimensions I checked it as the Aeroflow. So I'll swap that out for the Aeroflow black one. And then we'll probably paint that fuel line black with our brake lines as well. And then they'll just blend it in the bottom of the car and you won't see them. Much as I'd like you to see them, but it is what it is. All right. Have a good week and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.